but here in our studios, we have a survivor. He was in Tower One. Diana Williams has joined us, just so that you know who the, the cast is. Jim Dolan remains with us, and Bill Heitman. Heitman, and, and he is here because his brother-in-law, um, Scott Myers, is an audio man here. Bill, you literally um, were in the building when this happened. Tell us what happens. It was uh, quarter to nine exactly. I was sitting at my desk. We were all at our desk. And uh, the building just shook. I felt like I was on a telephone pole. That was just, I knew right away it was not an earthquake. And then I looked to my right because I'm on the south face. And there was just something above us hit us and shattered. How did you get out? We initially ran from the window in a panic, and then we just assembled ourselves, about 50 of us, and, and just uh, went down the stairs. A lot of people with you? Many. Chaos or organized? Organized. From what you saw, do you think most of the people on the 80th floor and below got out? I would think so. And how did you get from Lower Manhattan, World Trade Center, up to 67th and Columbus to be with us? I walked. What's the situation like in Lower Manhattan while you were walking? Well, the first off, when I left the building, I just thought that we were headed to some triage or something. And they kept directing us towards Broadway, a block and a half away. And I went to Broadway, and then all of a sudden, all hell broke loose, and I thought that we were being shot at or something. And then... A cloud of dust. You, couldn't, you just couldn't outrun this cloud of dust. You just couldn't outrun it. So we just got engulfed in this cloud of dust. And at that point, it was like a blizzard. It was like a blizzard. It was worse than a blizzard. I couldn't see anybody around me. We all ducked in. We all ducked in to a luncheonette. And I just couldn't stay in there. Everybody was trying to make phone calls, but it was even clouded with dust in the luncheonette. So I left. And I headed towards the seaport to head east, and that was when I just started walking north. And you alerted your family, right, Bill? They I alerted my okay. family 15 minutes ago. And they and must have been incredibly relieved. Yeah. I don't know if we said that he is uh, with Bank of America with the security division, and what were you doing at work today? I mean, uh, just making sure that the building was safe? No, we, uh, I start work at 5.30 in the morning, so I had already been working a good three hours already. Bill, so describe that, uh, that trip down the stairway. It was actually in pretty good spirits. There were some people that w had been above us that were visibly burned and injured, and, and, and there was a lot of move to the right, move to the right, letting people... And then as we got further down, it was moved to the right because the firemen were coming up. And the firemen were suffering bad with all the oxygen tanks. There. Bill, did you have any idea at that point what had happened? Yes. You knew that a plane... I didn't know that it was a jet. I knew. I thought it was a single helicopter, and I thought we thought that it was an accident. And, and Bill, uh, you, you, you said that when you came out, that's when the building exploded, but you were just out of the building when it collapsed. I wasn't out a minute. I was not out a minute. So that cloud that engulfed you was... Was, was the World right Trade Center. Year. How long then did it take you? It took you quite a while to get out of the building, right? It took an hour to get out of the building. So it took an hour for the building to collapse. Mm -hmm. And then probably another 30 to 40 minutes before the second one collapsed. So you were in that stairwell for an hour with other people. I imagine it was dark. There was smoke. emergency lighting, smoke. What was that? Uh, I didn't. I didn't experience a lot of smoke, smoke inhalation. A lot of people were covered. A lot of a lot of asthmatics. I have asthma of a very mild, but a lot of asthma. Bill, you left the building, but there were firefighters and other emergency personnel still in that building, right? That's what's got me most upset is the firemen and the people still in the building. Did you? Because I know they just didn't make it. I know they didn't make it. I heard, I don't know if it's true, I have heard stories as I walked up. I heard a lot of stories as I walked up, but I heard that people were jumping at the building. We have heard those same reports because of the heat and the smoke. We have heard those same reports. So at 9 o'clock in the morning, I know you get there at 5 o'clock. How many people are going to be in those towers at 9 o'clock in the morning? Have most people arrived to work by then? By 9 o'clock? Yeah. It's a, 
it's a, there's a lot of activity when, when, when I'm arriving, considering it's 5.30 in the morning, but uh, there's a lot of activity, activity from 6 o'clock on. Were you there were vastly just thousands of people in that building. Mm -hmm. Were you working at World Trade Center in 93? <laughs> yes, I was. Oh, gosh. Can you draw any and I thought that was bad. to this? I thought that was bad. Uh, that was bad enough. But today is a day that you will never forget, we will never forget, and probably most of the United States will never forget. And Phil, what about friends? And I hesitate to speculate.